In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So, this is a conclusion that we had from last time. We didn't show this slide, which is about without God there is no value, there is no ultimate value, there is no big value. So, we told about examples about giving difference between absolute right and wrong. And relative right and wrong. So absolute right and wrong means that God says this is no, you shall not do this, or you shall not, that's absolutely right and wrong. From God, it's very clear to say something absolutely right and wrong. From here, it's relative. Relative, as you guys give an example, we took, took about things that could be right for somebody and wrong for somebody else. Um, a perfect example of this Let's say uh, somebody you want to test whether he believes in something absolute or not, pick something he likes and make it relative. For example, uh, he has a nice stereo. And then when you go to his room, the stereo, he has not used it for a, or some iPad or whatever, he has not used it for a day and say, I'm gonna take it. And you just take it and leave. And you tell him, and he will say, this is mine. And you can say, as an example of something relative, but I believe if I like something, I should take it. The society doesn't permit this, of course, but the society can permit laws and things that would make what is wrong right. And we had examples from the school this morning. Or somebody doesn't believe in hunting deer, and somebody else believes in hunting deer. Who says right or wrong about this? So when everything is relative, people can fight with one another. So there has to be laws, but it's very clear when you have laws and you know that there is God that gives a moral law. Killing is wrong, stealing is wrong, having wrong relationships is wrong according to the morality of the Bible. The society doesn't say it's wrong. Who cares about what God says? They relativize it. It's, it's good for me, so I don't care what God says about it. So for us, it's very clear what is absolute, right and wrong, it's very clear. But the world lives with the relative right, right and wrong. What's right for people may be wrong for others and vice versa. Okay. Life without God has no ultimate purpose. Ultimate, it has big purpose, it doesn't have a big purpose. If at the end of one's life there is just death, standing with wide open arms, then what is the goal of life? All for nothing and no purpose. If I live and at the end there is death, what is the goal of my life? It has no purpose. So without God, there is no purpose for the existence of the universe. As we said, it's a train going off a cliff. What's the purpose for the universe? It has no meaning and it has no purpose. What is the universe? It must be pointless. No purpose or goal for its existence, just expanding terminal, terminal at the very end. Ending coldness. As we saw in the Big Bang movie, the, the world is expanding, it will be colder and colder and colder and colder till it becomes completely not livable. So what is the point of its existence? It has no purpose. That immediately falls out from the removal of God. Because of this, consequently, or as a result, also man would have no purpose of the existence. In the universe, there is no point for its existence. It came by chance and it would end cold. Then why are we here? Why are the animals there? Why are the trees there? Why there is life? Just for us to interact a little bit and then die? Fish haga ba There is no, there is no like infinite God who will receive us. I am created in His image. When this is removed, then it's a bunch of like social experiments in school, in universities, in marriage, in having kids, and then when somebody passes away, okay, we're done, bye-bye. There's no purpose. There's no purpose. Purpose, يعني, there, there, يعني كده, لها, or something that makes your life worth living. Um, H.G. Wells has an, somebody who wrote an article or a, a novel called The Time Machine. The Time Machine. 
about a man who travels to the future to discover the destiny of man. He went very far in the future, billions of years, to see the end of the universe. He writes, in the novel, the world was silent. All the sounds of man, cries of birds, hum of insects, all was over. Then the time traveler returned. Top returned to what? To a point that's early. This is, this isn't happening yet, but it's going to happen. He returned to a merely an earlier point of rush towards oblivion. Oblivion, yani, when somebody's oblivious and he doesn't know anything. Oblivion, yani, nothingness. So it's like as if you see the train going off a cliff and then you return back in history, I'm still on the train. But you know that the end station is darkness, it's just pointless. So in the time machine, he expressed to H.G. Wells that imaginary novel, of course, that somebody took a, a time machine forward and he found that the world was completely silent and then he came back and said, we're going to nowhere. We're just, there's no purpose for our existence. We're just getting to that silence. So there is no hope. No purpose means no hope. T.S. Eliot, he ended his story saying, this is the way the world ends, this is the way the world ends, this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, it started with a bang, a big bang, but with a whimper, whimper like a very small sound, something like this. So that's the end. What is the purpose then? Why is the universe existing to begin with? So when God is removed, everything has no meaning, everything has no value, everything has no purpose. The three words that make life worth living. Okay. This is atheism. As I told you, it's very, very concise statement. The atheism is the belief that there was nothing and nothing happened to nothing and then nothing magically exploded for no reason creating everything and then a bunch of everything magically rearranged itself for no reason whatsoever into self-replicating bits which then turned into dinosaurs. That's what would it be if you believe in the non-existence of God. Uh, do you, you remember the movie? Or remember the statement that you put in the movie? We don't know where the matter came from. It's like you're watching a screen that has no reason. Exactly. As we said, junkyard, the screen opens, and then 30 seconds later it closes. There's no purpose. That's about life having no value. Remember this again. This is what, what atheists believe. It makes perfect sense. Again, the belief that there was nothing, and then nothing happened in this one trillionth of a second, and there's a, this dot of infinite energy. Nothing happened to nothing, and then nothing magically exploded. For no reason, creating everything. Because the Big Bang is a source of everything. As we said, Big Bang is, we can believe it in Christianity. Because we know who made the Big Bang. We know who put this dot of infinite energy or high energy at the very beginning. God created, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Genesis 1.1. The whole explosion of the world could be in that verse. This is actually what St. Basil says in the Hexameron. Creating everything and then a bunch of everything magically rearranged itself for no reason whatsoever. If you do the six days of the creation, there's a very scientific way of explaining it from the church fathers, believe it or not. And the six days are, could, be, could be billions of years. It doesn't have, it's not 620, definitely not 624 hour days, yes. So they're saying that the first people that, like how we started was by dinosaur? No, it's just, the, the dinosaur is just an example that creation appeared, but all started from nothing. It just, how can you start with nothing and oh, end with the creation? Okay. This is just an example. So that's the perfect way of, an example of how they think God is not real. Right. By a little. 
No, this is, this is showing that atheism doesn't make sense. Yani, the part I want you to remember here is that every magically rearrange itself for no reason whatsoever into, into whatever, whatever the creation is. But so the, the funny part is this, nothing, there was nothing, and then nothing happened to nothing, and then nothing magically exploded. That's Big Bang. Because they don't talk about God. And remember in the movie, they become very scientific afterwards. But this is exactly what they mean, because they skip the part of God created this. Are you guys getting the idea? So, the, the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, the fate of the sons of man is the same as the end of animals. Yes, but because he believes in God, he said, all is vanity. If I, if there is no God, I will die like an animal. And so, that's what Solomon says, vain of vanity. Everything is vain. Futility of pleasure, wealth, political fame. His verdict, Solomon's verdict, vain of vanity. Life is completely vain. Unless there is God in it. Good question? Watch the science video and science, and it said that the, the, the animals that survived the, the Big Bang, the, the animals that, well, the animals that survived the world getting colder are us. The glaciers, the, 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 the melting of the glaciers, mm -hmm. the Precambrian age, and all of that stuff is, yeah, but we're not getting, I, I, we're not getting into science as we said in this retreat. I just wanted to show you how when they talk about Big Bang, in their statement, they start with this dot that appears, but it's from nothing, as this summary is telling us. This is the end of man if he had no ultimate purpose for existence. He would be like an animal. The death of a man is like the death of an animal. But because Ecclesiastes is a biblical book, so Solomon tells us only in God. So man and universe, we are just accidents. There is no reason for existence. Man is a freak of nature, just freak means just an accident of nature, just happened to appear. Man and insects are the same, just two accidents of nature. Nature led to insects, and nature led to man. That's how you have no value, you have no purpose. We are victims of a sort of genetic and environmental roulette. Like, you know what the roulette is? It's gambling things. You turn it and then it falls into black or red. So and what means that God, not God, sorry, that nature by its progression, insects appear and man appeared and were both a chance, were just a, a coincidence because the Big Bang led to both of us and nobody's behind the Big Bang, so it was just an accident. Uh, I will, I will skip this part because it talks about some scientists and I don't want to, to um, make it heavier for you, but I will summarize with this one. Gravity of the alternative means how difficult to live with, alternative means no God, the alternative of having no God. We have to ponder deeply on the gravity of the alternative life which culminates or results from the absence of God. When you assert that God does not exist, you are in a miscarriage of nature. Just nature made you appear. Thrust into an ending, dying universe for an infinitesimal period. Infinitesimal means very, very, very small because your life compared to the life of the universe is nothing. It's like the hair, how thin is your hair? It's even, your hair is thicker than how long your life is compared to the billions of years of the universe. However long it is. Life is rendered to be without reason. Man and universe exist to no purpose since the end is death. They also came to be to no purpose since they are just a blind chance. Big Bang is a chance, just a dot appeared and exploded. Therefore, with God we have hope and with no God we have despair. We appear by accident and we're ending into dying. Existence of God is vital, vital means very important to the existence of man. If God is dead, then man is dead too, and glory be to God forever and ever. A very quick summary of the end for, for this. Any questions? Yes. So, we're practically just like any question. We actually have one, we have like one out of six chances of surviving.
know of existence. We just existed by chance because it's, we are a result of Big Bang. All the creation is a result of chance. An explosion happened and then we appeared. Perfect sense, yes. Yes. So, but was they be saying that, like, since we came from an accident, no, the accident is not taking us away, but you coming from an accident does not make you different from any animal. Because you are an accident, animals are accidents, mosquitoes are accidents, so what's different about you? Yeah, brain. Yeah, but your brain is an accident, also why it didn't happen to others. But each design, there's no design behind it. Design means somebody sat down and said, this is how man will be like, and this is how beasts will be like. That's God. But how can Big Bang decide what man is and what mosquitoes are? It's an accident. Okay, what else? Yes. Muslims are considered atheists. No, that's not true. Because Muslims believe in God. But their God... Their belief in God is completely different than Christianity. But they believe there is a creator. God is actually a creator. Yes. Why what? Because they are denying the existence of God. That's the whole point. It's very easy to say God did it. It makes perfect sense. No, they don't. You can't be fooling yourself. They believe that God didn't exist and that's why they use the Big Bang as the source of the creation. But they never say how the Big Bang, who started it. They always say, some material came together and a big explosion happened. So where did the material come from? Baking soda and vinegar. <laughs> really? Soda and vinegar? Baking soda and vinegar. Yeah. They make big <laughs> Okay, I have something else scientific for you guys. I will end with this very, very quick summary or very quick uh, note. Which is called, this is the biggest challenge to atheists. It's called the fine tuning of the universe. What's that? Fine tuning of the universe means that everything in the universe is very, very accurate. What is the constant for gravity? You guys know what gravity is? Yeah. When you leave this pen and falls, there is a certain acceleration by which the pen falls. And it has a number. You know what that number is? It's 32 foot per second square or 9.8 meters per second square. Oh, very simple. A very simple question to atheists. Did this number come by evolution or it was designed? Did the world play with numbers till it figured out 9.8? In billions of years, will gravity change to become another number? Yeah. No. No. This is called fine-tuning, but there are certain constants, certain, con certain numbers in the universe, if they change, the whole world will crash. If gravity changes, we cannot function. So how is it next? If it's like almost impossible. Exactly. Exactly. So the biggest challenge for atheists today, from an atheist lecturer in, in England, in, uh, in Oxford, he said, fine-tuning of the universe in the last 30 years, there are some discoveries that happened that led to the discovery of certain numbers that any of them, if they change a tiny bit to be more or a tiny bit to be less, things will not function. So, I can't imagine a scientist to be an atheist because if they come across these numbers, for example, what is the, you know the atom? Anybody study the atom here? Yeah. Okay, you know the atoms have, 
inside the nucleus there's there is what protons exactly and neutrons and out here there is what very good and the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons that's why the atom is neutral right it has no charge later on you're going to study the conductors and the semiconductors and the insulators that's related to that stuff anyway what is the weight of a what is the weight of the proton the weight of the proton, I'm not sure if I'm right or wrong about this, but it could, it's 3.1 times 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. I'm not sure of this one, but probably this one is right. Another number, that if this proton changes its weight to be lighter or heavier, the whole matter, the whole atom will change its weight and the matter will not function. What is the charge on an electron? An electron is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a charged particle, it's or, or of the proton, it's 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Again, these numbers are so accurate. The whole world of semiconductors and conductors and the whole function of electricity depends on these things. The wave equation, this is things that you guys, when you come across them, there's something called Schrodinger equation, which is the extending waves, how do, the, how do waves travel? Electromagnetic equations, things that, I'm just saying names here, the college will get more understanding of it than you. These things are so accurately functioning that you can build systems on it. If they, if they change with time, or if they're not accurate, nothing will function. Your device, the cell phone will not work. It relies very much on electromagnetic radiation, this is how it travels and tons of other there is about there's a book uh, called the cosmos it talks about the fine tuning by hugh ross he's actually here in orange county this guy was a professor i'm not sure if he is still a professor at caltech very very strong school in engineering without preaching he's a physicist without preaching from his research he opened the Bible and he believed in Christianity. Nobody preached to him. What he found in physics led him to discover there has to be designer behind this. It cannot be an accident. This is, Caltech is one of the top schools in the world, by the way. It's here in California. Does research with JPL, the Jet Propulsion Lab, in tons of stuff. Very top-notch engineering school. And the guy said, from his discoveries, let me just open Genesis 1. When he read the order of things, and it matched what he did as the research without any preach on his own. He just shifted to become a Christian. And he wrote a book. He, li he, re he lists constants of the universe, cosmological constants, and other constants that we live by. He lists them all, how accurate they are, and he explains if, each, if any one of them goes less by an amount or bigger by an amount, what will happen in the world. And this is because the last 30 years of discoveries of new particles, new, wave, new explanations of, of things about the cell, about the atom, that were not discovered before. So, science actually is one of the easiest way to prove God's existence. That's why I wanted to do the harder way today with you in the retreat. The meaning and the value and the purpose is much difficult philosophically to talk about God, because people argue, but it's so easy when you, when you put science. Very easy. There has to be a designer. Designer means somebody designed the world. It cannot be an accident. You cannot have accidentally the world figuring out what's the constant for gravity by itself. It, it, it takes design. The world played with some numbers They came up with a proton charge to be 1.6 and 10 power minus, plus nine, minus 19 in the negative or the positive depending on the particle. Yes. But, like, won't they say, like, who created God? Yeah, this question is, is, is very silly way of running away from answering that God exists. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very childish approach, okay? God, God, is, God is the entity that the world, that the verb created does not apply to. Because we say he's the origin of everything. So don't come and tell me who created him. 
another cut before him. Okay, then the oh, great. It's a very silly discussion to get away from answering that there is design. Because once there is design in the world, then there is a designer. Um, I'll tell you the, the concept of, of design. I'll, who else has question? You had a question? Uh, not a question, just a comment. Um, need a research. Yes, the comment. <coughs> Can you just tell him that you can't really fit something that huge or something that big in that small mind that you have? Because God is like, it's like fitting a, a whole ocean in a bucket. So you can, can you just tell him you can't fit a whole ocean in a bucket? Not convincing enough. You have to have convincing evidence. It's a good theological argument. <laughs> it's a good theological argument, but it's, it's going to be very simplistic for them. It's not going to be convincing. But the argument, that, that these are easier. We could have done it in five minutes, and Ramadan can give you the constants. But these are very deep, because you're going to deal with people who are atheists, philosophically, not scientifically. And this, these are harder to argue with. Because philosophy is like all over the place. Science is very concrete. Very concrete. Shakira, the fact that you don't know some science makes it harder for you to answer, but because of, of the scientific background and the interest in these things, if you get into them, it becomes so quick to answer atheists in terms of, in terms of, I was telling to somebody, Rafael, or something like, no, somebody asked about how to use the, the field of robotics to answer atheists, but maybe I can say this at the, later. After your questions. Abuna, are you a scientist? <laughs> Sorry? When someone says who created God, you say God is the creator. Yeah, God is the creator. I mean, it's who created God, as I, as I said, as a childish approach to just shoot the argument down for, for no reason. Because the, the, God is the origin of everything. If they don't believe, we have to resort to the design in the universe. The, diver, the universe has design. Le, with the design, I'll tell you the difference between three things. Hold your questions. There is something called random, and there's something called order, and there's something called information. Random is like X, T, 1, uh, Delta, uh, uh, 4, 17, that's random. Order would be like this, M, E, M, E, M, E, M, E. Does this have information in it? Does it give you any information? No, it has order, thank you. It has order but it doesn't have information. Information means I love bananas, for example. This sentence has information. You cannot just come up with it haphazardly. So the world has information. The, the cell has information. Not just order, it has information. Who can give something to have information? Somebody with information. Are you guys getting the idea? There is no, there is nothing by itself can acquire information. And that's why I studied the person in the robotics field. You design a robot, it's a piece of metal. The car, the car that adjusts its speed and can turn left and right on its own. As there is, Carnegie Mellon is one of the first universities that did this called NavLab, very early in the 90s, designing com computers that can drive the car by itself. And they drove actually the car from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles. The very first thing about automated cars. So the car is a piece of metal. Who drives it? Not the computer. The programmers that put the program in the computer that can make decisions. Are you guys getting the idea? So there has to be an intelligent mind that puts a certain piece of code, software, that controls the hardware and the sensors and all of these things to let the car decide on itself what to do. The car was driven by itself, not with the driver. It drove itself from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles. This is an intelligent car. 
Smart Did the car software. figure it out by itself? No. no. Intelligent programmers wrote software code that measures the sensors, can find the road, can find blocks, can move around, can read traffic lights, and was able to adjust the, the engine to stop or to move based on the sensor information and the decision making. That is called intelligent car. It st they started the research in the early 90s. Are you major in robotics? We'll talk about it later. So, guys, this is exactly what intelligent machines are proof of the existence of God. Intelligent things cannot have intelligence on their own. They have to get it from a higher intelligence. The highest intelligence is God. And that's why humans can create. How can you create? Because you're in the image of God. God gives you the ability to create. If they say we're coming from monkeys or whatever, very simple answer. I'm not going to get into biology. If we're coming from monkeys, where is the colony of monkeys that can create? Well, if we're a transition between monkeys, there must be something in the middle. Have you seen monkeys that can create something? Because they are the middle link between us and monkeys. Right? Monkeys nowadays use tools. Yeah. Yeah. Monkeys imitate something, but they don't create something. There's a big difference between order and information. You can teach a monkey to do whatever, but a monkey by itself will never create something. You can create something. It didn't exist, and you created it. Monkeys, monkeys, sharpen sticks and stick them down. And I'm like, they sharpen sticks, they do whatever. Again, it's by training. This is not intelligence, this is imitation. Guys, if, if we come from monkeys, there should be a species of monkeys between us and the monkeys that is able to create. And it should be stronger than monkeys, then, then they should exist further. They should exist today because they are the strongest form of monkeys. Show me the colony or show me the civilization of monkeys where the monkeys are creators. Extinct. Why? They should be more intelligent. We can't extinct because they are more intelligent than monkeys. Yes. Also, if we involve monkeys, one of the monkeys still nowadays be involving humans? Good answer. What happens, they find, for example, a skull called Lucy, and Lucy has a similarity between a monkey and a human, one skull, and they say, they, they, call, it, they call it Lucy, and they say, oh, oh, we found the missing link. The missing link should not be one skull. The missing link should be millions of skulls. So please, the History Channel and all these programs, they just put music and very nice stuff, but the, uh, the, 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 the language in it is so garbage. So garbage. You just have to, it's hard for you to read through it. So don't be, don't feel that the church doesn't have an answer. Unfortunately, we need to have regular sessions of apologetics in order to let you know that the church is very capable of answering, scientifically answering, not just believe in God will follow us. I have to end here because of the vespers, or should we take two more questions? David had a question? You had a question? Okay. So, they would say that if when a monkey is born, they would usually have hair, so then what is the scientific evidence that, that we were made from that we were made from monkeys if we don't have hair? Like it's not the hair. Like it's not the hair. Most people think that the big bang theory happened by uh, Greek gods and Egyptian gods. Is that I think that's false, but they say that they made it because they had like one of them controlled the underworld, one controlled the sun, and they all combined together. And, and when they tell me, explain it, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, the, the Big Bang happened by Egyptian gods? Well, um, we say, no, we're not going to explain this because this is not what we believe in. So we don't have to explain something we don't believe in. We don't believe in Egyptian gods, and we don't believe that they can create or do anything. It's uh, something the Egyptians thought about and made it up. There is Horus and Osiris and Isis, these are made up by the Egyptians, but there's only one god. We don't believe in any other god. These are made by the Egyptians and they believed in them. Are they true? No, they're not true. Yes. Asian what? 
Asia food exists before the Big Bang Theory. No, they could be gods in, in the other universe and then part of the creation, they made their own country. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really... An atheist would pull up anything just to challenge, but they don't have any ground. Yes? A higher intelligence. It's true because an accident can't be so perfect. A higher? What is the question then? That Jesus is a higher intelligence. Yeah, because here, an accident, an accident can't be that perfect. So God is Okay, we're not discussing our Lord Jesus Christ at all in this discussion. All what we're discussing in this topic is that there is. There is a creator, there is God. We're not discussing even the Christian faith. But for us, of course, we know who God is. He was incarnate. I, that's why you notice in our discussion, we didn't discuss Christianity. So I'm discussing it completely from non-biblical viewpoint in order to make you understand it from the atheist point of view. Because if I use the Bible, then we cannot use the argument. He will tell me, don't use the Bible. I'm not talking about Jesus Christ at all, although we know that Jesus is God, definitely, and He's the creator of the invisible and the visible and the invisible. This is another step, but now we're at the, at the most difficult step, which is talking about God, that there is a creator behind the universe. That's harder to talk about, and that's the, the, the beginning level of our discussion, not the, not the easiest level, the most difficult one, not to use the Bible and not to use our Lord Jesus Christ, logically and philosophically. Okay. Thank you guys very much and glory to God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.